again with uh, these different um, graphs. So you guys see we have three graphs uh, here. What we want to look at or investigate is how can we possibly uh, learn how to automatically profile or com compare graphs. Okay, so you can look at these graphs and you see that they have, you know, different number of nodes, uh, different types of connections, right? So, um, well, all of them are undirected graphs. They are binary graphs. But you can see that here you have like different uh, structures of these graphs, right? So our goal in this lecture is to learn uh, or to look at how we can possibly profile graphs, compare graphs. So one of the... Um, one of the measures that we looked at in the previous class, if you guys remember, it's the node degree, okay? So we know that each node in, this, uh, in each of those graphs has a degree. For example, the degree of this node is four, has four connections for this one, for these ones are just, you know, one, 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 etc. So um, here, what we can possibly do is look at the degree as a topological measure of these graphs and use its distribution to create a profile of the graph and then in that way we can try to compare different graphs independently of their dimensionality, how many nodes they have, okay? So what is the distribution here basically? So we have a node degree, it's just the frequency. We look at, for example, node degree starting from one till, I don't know, like a uh, uh, hundred connections. And then we try to profile those. So you can look at this like this is basically as a histogram, right? So we're just plotting the frequency and learning the profile of, of a graph, let's say graph G1. So this is the profile of a first graph, right? And then you have a profile of a different graph. So if you guys compare these two, what do you notice? Just by looking at these profiles. So for example, for the yellow graph, let's call it G1, you notice that many nodes, the majority of nodes, they have what? They have low degrees, okay? So they're not densely connected to other nodes, but you have some nodes right here, okay? That, and they have like uh, a low number of nodes. They have a small, uh, a large number of, a large, um, a very big connectedness to other nodes. So as for the other one, you can see that here all nodes have mostly, they're centered around, I don't know, let's put a number here, maybe 20, okay? So most of them, they have a degree, uh, 20 connections to other nodes. And then it goes down, but you see a little bump here. So also another cluster of a nodes, it, it might have around 60 uh, connections to other nodes. So these profiles are very important. They, they can help us understand the topology and the structure of a graph. Now, there is another thing. So in the last lecture, we looked at node degree, okay? But we did not talk about node strength. So node degree, it's generally, uh, we derive it from um, undirected graphs, okay? And also, we will look that we can, we will see in this lecture that we can define degrees for directed, gra directed graphs. But there is also what we call strength. The strength here is for weighted graphs. So imagine if you have a graph like this, okay? Let's put, uh, draw a simple graph here. And these are connections. So here, this is the strength of the connection or the um, thickness of the edge connecting these two nodes, one and two. So let's say we have 15 here. And this one is maybe uh, three, okay? So what we can also do to profile a weighted graph is to plot the distribution of the weights on the edges of the graph. So this is for weighted graphs. And you can see how we can possibly generalize this to, uh, uh, to weighted graphs. So let's say, for example, we might have a profile like this for, um, you know, graph one. And then we have another profile for graph two. But one thing to keep in mind is that, if you guys remember, um, we define the degree of a node, right? So the degree, what is the degree of node two here? 
So let's look at this node here. The degree of this node, V2, is equal to what? To 2. So simple. But we can also compute the strength of a node. So what is the strength of this node? S of V2 is just the sum of the weights of the edges that are connected to it. Okay? So in this case, it's 18. Right. Now, this is quite simple. We can, um, when we use this measure, when we use the degree, what do you guys know this? What are we looking at in, in, you know, in, in the graph? What are we considering to create these profiles? Whether the uh, node degree profile or distribution or the node strength distribution. That, what does this tell us about the graph? For example, let's look at these two examples very quickly. So here, I know that the... Um, degree of this node is 4 and the degree of this node is 2 and the degree of this node is 3 but if I tell you what is the what do you guys think is the most important node in this graph like the one that has like an important role or like much influence on other nodes it's the center node right here, it has a degree of 4, but if you look at this graph, okay, this node has a degree of 3. This one also has a degree of 3, right? You guys look at that. But, sorry? Oh, 4, yes, very good, thank you. Yeah, this has a degree of 4. This has a degree of 2. This is 4. Yeah, so if you spot any mistakes when I'm talking, guys, just, you know, feel free to uh, point it out. So here in this example, what, is, what do you think is the most important node? If you just look at this graph, without looking at degrees. It's this one, right? It's very important. If you remove that node, the network will be broken. But you can see that with degrees, we cannot capture the full structure of a graph. Why? Because the node degree only looks at the immediate local neighborhood of a node. Okay? So... Alternatively, let's look, okay, so here's the thing, so with the node degree, just to um, summarize quickly, so what we have, we have a non-uniform, uh, generally for graphs, we real-world graphs, we have non-uniform distribution of uh, degrees. We notice that it is, this distribution generally tends to be heterogeneous, okay, so multi-peaked, so you don't have a single peak, you might have multi-peaks, okay, and also uh, this shows actually that different nodes in a graph they have different topological roles okay yes what is sorry B? Can you ask which one is most important? yes yes We will learn that in a bit. That's a very good question. So the goal here in this lecture is to understand the difference between these nodes and how to identify and find the most important nodes. But in this case, basically, the degree is different, right? You can see that this node had, has a degree of 2. These neighboring nodes have a degree of 4. If we think that the most important node has a, you know, is, is like the most connected one, has you know, the highest number of connections to other nodes in the graph, we might pick these guys, right, as important, but we kind of overlook the, the middle one, right? But this one is important too. So it depends on how your, your, which topological measure you're using to define important nodes on the graph, and this is what we will learn about today. Okay. So here, uh, so in this lecture, we will look at uh, the centrality measure, the definition of centrality. So this is another topological measure. And centrality, actually, there is a, a very um, heavy literature on defining centrality in graph theory. Uh, again, we can derive it from what we call um, degree of a node, closeness, betweenness. And when we say a central node, we also can call it a hub node. That's a node that uh, basically... Um, uh, it has a lot of information that passes through it to other nodes. So it's like it's a, a very important node. So central and hubs generally are the same, like they're considered, you can consider them as the same thing. Now let's look at this uh, case. So here uh, we looked at these graphs. 
what is the most important node in each graph? So what about its degree? So for example, this one, these two nodes, we saw that, well, this one has a degree of one, two, three, four, five, right? So it's important compared to all other uni degree nodes. Uh, as for these ones, you have like degrees of four and this is two, but we notice that sometimes uh, if we use the degree, we might, you know, overlook an important node. So no degree or strength, and when we talk about weighted graphs, right, it provides what we call a partial information about the importance of that node. So it does not provide what we call a comprehensive characterization of individual nodes. This is why, because it looks at the graph at a local scale, very local scale. What is a local scale? It's the immediate neighborhood or immediate uh, neighbors of that node. The global scale is looking at the whole graph. Okay, so here there are more broader or important measures that we can use to examine the role of a node. So how to basically, uh, the question that we want to tackle, how to examine the capacity of a node to influence other nodes, right, in the graph. And this problem can be used, uh, like this actually um, definition can be used to solve many problems, like real world problems. Identifying the, the, the most important nodes in a graph is very important. For example, if you have um, an epidemic disease that uh, hits a country, so you want to know the starting cities, right, or the starting locations of that disease. So these nodes are uh, the nodes from where or from which uh, all, you know, like the epidemia is spreading out very quickly to all other nodes in the graph. Or, for example, we'll see later on, like in uh, like um, airline, uh, uh, like different how to schedule different flights, for example. So hubs are very important. So the definition of an important or influential, we call it also central node, depends on the kind of influence. Okay, we aim to measure. So different definitions of central hubs. Uh, we can come up with different definitions for those. It depends how you define the influence. And this is actually problem related. So you guys might work on different problems and the influence you want to exploit or investigate in your problem might be different. So we need to, def to think about how can I define the influence of the node in my graph. So here, for example, in this case, we have a geographical representation of the worldwide airline network. And each black dot represents an airport, and the edges, they represent the passenger traffic between these airports. And you can see that in some particular locations, right, we have uh, hubs where all flights basically, they, they, they meet at this point. So there are like many connections emanating from these, uh, these hubs that we can easily spot if we get to analyze this network, okay? So now, a bit of history, what is the concept of centrality? So the concept of centrality, it was introduced by Bavla in 1948, so it's like it dates back. How, how was it introduced? It was basically based on social networks. So we wanted to understand how a specific individual in a social network can influence other individuals uh, when performing a particular task. So this is how the centrality uh, the centrality was introduced to graph theory. And then later on, Freeman basically, he showed that all centrality measures, they identify the same central node in a star-like graph, okay? So basically, if you take any centrality measure and you apply it to this star-like graph, to this uh, particular graph, you will find that all those measures that you have defined, although they are different, they end up finding exactly the same center, okay? So this is another definition of centrality. So here, basically, what is said is that this central node, any communication uh, through it, that sh it should pass through, any communication through the, uh, the graph, it should pass through the central node. This is why it is very important. Now, these are three fundamental properties that were ascribed uh, to a central node. So a central node, so this is very important to uh, uh, understand, also uh, contemplate a little bit. So the first one is that the central node, it has the maximum possible degree, 
which means it is connected to all other nodes. So this is in the ideal case. So we want to have we want our central node to have the maximum connections to all other nodes. Okay. Number two, we want it to fall on the shortest possible topological path between all pairs of nodes. So what does this mean? Fully connected graph. And we count for each node uh, how much distance with other nodes. For example, uh, in this graph, mm -hmm. uh, node number two has uh, one unit of distance to the center, center node no? and two units of distance to others. This is undiagonal. Right. So if we sum this up, two, 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 six, seven, it has seven uh, units of distance mm -hmm. to all other nodes. But for the uh, node with number one, it only has four units of distance to other nodes. To other nodes, so it can easily reach basically the other nodes. What you're describing here actually is the second criteria. So let me, that's a very good uh, uh, remark. So basically here it means that the third one is it is maximally close to all other nodes. So, well, the first one, let me explain the second one. So first, so it means falling on the shortest path, it means any path that connects Two notes. Let's take these two random notes here, okay? So whatever pair of notes you're taking in your graph, the shorter, the shortest path that connects them should necessarily uh, or ideally go through that note. So basically that note is the speediest one in transferring flow of information across pairs of notes in the graph, okay? So for example, to go from two to four, the shortest path is you can uh, you can go this well if we have another path let's say if I add other nodes like here okay so this is not the shortest path but the shortest path is this one right you can see that the shortest path necessarily it needs to go through node one so node one is central here and the second the last one it is maximally close to all nodes it means it falls on the shortest distance to all other nodes. So it's not just pairs of nodes, it's not just paths, but this node, if you compute its distance to all other nodes, it's actually close to everyone, almost everyone at the same time. It's the closest to everyone in the network, okay? So here, if we look at these definitions, the first one, we will see later on these specifically, the first one, is related to the degree, which means uh, how many connections it has to its uh, to other local nodes. Betweenness, it means like it's in between all other nodes in terms of shortest path. So it lies between all other pairs of nodes. If you want to uh, go quickly from two to five, this lies in between, okay? And the last one is closeness. It means that actually this node is close to all other nodes in the graph, okay? In terms also of shortest path, okay? So now, um, another question we looked at in the previous lecture, and this is just to recall, is the topological space a Euclidean space? So this is a graph, right? And let's put, for example, some numbers here. Have one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So if this was a Euclidean space and you present these nodes, uh, the distance uh, that we will use is basically Euclidean distance, right? And Euclidean distance is a physical distance. So you might want to go from city one to two, right? City one to, th uh, to five. Uh, this is, you know, 100 kilometer. This is, you know, like uh, 20 kilometers, okay? But the thing is that we have seen that even if you represent, like, different nodes not necessarily uh, have a physical meaning because these two guys here, they might be equidistant, right, from this one, but still they might be very, very far away topologically. It depends on how many other connections you have between them. So, and, and you know, like, the structure of the graph, the topological structure of the graph is not nested in a Euclidean space. It's nested in a, in a non-Euclidean space. And this is very important because graphs are non-Euclidean objects 
okay? So, for example, to go from here to there, like to from two to three, you can count, these are, this is, you know, a topological distance. We can call it, you know, the number of edges that allow you to go from two to three. So it's one plus one. It's different from the physical distance if you were to, uh, you know, like draw this in a Euclidean space and have like a distance between these two that is physical. So these are two different things. Now, let's look at the different measures of centrality. So the first one is actually the simplest one, and this is, we call it the degree centrality. So what is the degree centrality? So in this case, we're going to define it for an undirected graph, and it is defined as the degree of the node. So that's so simple. Here we have the adjacency matrix. It's binarized. So here, uh, whether there is connection or not, we just sum over all uh, nodes connected to um, I, nodes J connected to I. So as I mentioned before, what is the underlying, uh, the underlying assumption about the central nodes when using this definition? For example, what is the underlying, what, when, when, when you're looking at these guys, okay, we are only exploring what? The local structure of the graph. So the problem with this is like we're only looking at what? The immediate, let me write immediate neighbors of a node i. So we're just exploring the immediate neighbors, right? So this is quite problematic because here we are just, you know, uh, we're not exploring the full connectivity or the global connectivity of a graph. So let's look at this case and tell me guys why this is problematic. Take a minute to think about this, okay? So these numbers, they represent the degree of these nodes, okay? So if we compare the importance of these two nodes, right? Nodes I and J in this graph, okay? They're, they might be connected, but I'm just um, comparing these uh, regardless of the connection between them. What you guys know is they have the same degree. So if we use um, centrality degree, okay, or degree centrality, we will end up saying that these two have exactly the same influence. They're equally important. But it's not the case. Why is that? Yes. So we know that, we notice that Actually, the neighbors, the neighbors of these nodes, okay, they, ha they are densely connected uh, to other nodes in the network. So in this case, we did not only look at, um, at the nodes themselves, right? We explored the connectivity of their neighbors. So what we want to, uh, you know, like to define a new, def to give a new definition to the influence of a node in the graph, we can look at how central this node is, but also we can look at how central it is in function of how, you know, like other nodes that are its neighbors, basically. So if these guys are central, then this node might, must give, you know, it must have higher centrality. So here, the influence of each node is basically determined by the degree of its neighbors, okay? So in this case, we look at the degree centrality, the degree centrality only looks at the quantity, it does not look at the quality, okay? So quantity, it means it looks at the number of connections you have, but it, not, it does not look at the quality of the neighbors you have. Now, I would like you guys to take a minute and try to update the definition, to, to introduce a new definition of centrality that integrates both degree and also uh, the importance of the nodes that are connected to that node, okay? So basically you want a definition that has quantity and quality.